Hey, welcome back to Metchball Grid. My name is Andre. Thanks so much for tuning in. As you might know, if you've been following the channel over the last couple of months, in just two weeks on August 24th and 25th, we'll be running a Netrunner tournament weekend here in the Silver Goblin in Montreal called NAN PC Montreal. We are so stoked. It was just a year ago, mind you, that we ran a Canadian Nationals here in Montreal, also at the Silver Goblin. And that was my first time organizing a Netrunner event, let alone of that size. And I just had such a fantastic time putting together this whole weekend where people can come out and participate in Netrunner, folks coming out for their first tournament or their 50th tournament, traveling in some great distance, just to have a good excuse to come together and hang out and play this game and meet some folks and just have a good time. And one year later, we're basically doing it all again. Again, August 24th and 25th, once again at the Silver Goblin, we're going to be running a weekend long tournament. What this video is, it's a basically a primer to talk about some basic information you might want to know if you're going to an NPC, things like scheduling, what you need to know about the location, about the city, some basic information. So if you're coming down to an NPC Montreal in just a couple of weeks, firstly, thanks so much for tuning in and we got some information for you. Otherwise, if you're not able to go this video, you don't really have to watch it, but it's actually up to me now. Otherwise, if you want to tune in for this short video to try and make you excited and within the next two weeks, if you can make some drastic changes to your travel schedule, maybe you want to drop by. Now, firstly, there's going to be a lot of links in this video, a lot of helpful websites. They're all linked in the YouTube description. You just have to click down and usually hit the see more button, but they should all be there. Very specifically, this is the always be running page for NPC Montreal. And unfortunately, while always be running is a fantastic website, it's kind of been down for the last week or so. So while this page needs to be updated, it's missing a lot of information. Not only can I not access it, but I can't share it with you. We just can't really touch it. So as soon as always be running is back up, I will be updating this main page with as much information as largely you see in this video. But until then, uh, that link probably won't exist until it's back up. So hopefully ABR is back up soon. Now, I think the first thing we have to talk about is what is NANPC? And NANPC, so you might guess, is an acronym that stands for the North American Netrunner Player Circuit. And this is a new organization. This is their first year. It's a bunch of volunteers. It's a bunch of tournament organizers from all across North America that are working together this summer to put on a bunch of in-person big events across North America. Again, this is the first year they've been active. And across the summer, they're putting on nine Netrunner events. Already seven of them have happened, and they've all been fantastic. We were able to be down in Boston in the uh, end of May and just had a fantastic time at that tournament. And this is us. We're the eighth event, the penultimate event of the summer, August 24th and 25th here in Montreal. Now, why NPC exists? Uh, currently, there's a bit of, a, I think, a gap in the organized play structure on the NSG side. We're on a local level. If you want to go out and play, generally the highest thing that you have access to is what are called circuit openers. And circuit openers are great, but they're relatively casual events. They're generally not a weekend long. They usually don't have top cuts and it's kind of hard to travel out to a circuit opener if you need to go a bit of distance. The unfortunate thing is the next thing up above circuit openers are nationals. There's nothing in between circuit openers and nationals currently in the Null Signal Games organized play policy. And there's just this kind of demand for having more organized play that is a bit bigger than a circuit opener, but maybe a bit more approachable than a national. That's a huge jump. And that's largely what NAMPC events are like. Uh, so again, this Montreal NAMPC is technically a casual tier level event as much as it should be a bigger thing. It's going to be a weekend long event and people are, will be traveling in for this. But I promise you, it's going to be a phenomenal event for all types and all skill sets of Netrunner. Totally worth noting, the nice folks at NSG have great plans for 2025 with their organized play policies. They're basically fixing this issue that exists. I have a whole video about that up here, but uh, largely NAPC exists as an excuse to put on nice events so people have a reason to go out and travel and participate in more Netrunner. Now, if you hear the name Player Circuit and it sounds like a competitive thing for grinders who are fighting it out for leaderboard points, well, you're not incorrect in some ways. There is a leaderboard. And if you go compete at a bunch of NPC events at the end of the season, you could come in first place here and get a nice prize. But let me tell you, if I thought this event was not a good fit for someone to make it their first Netrunner event that they ever go out to to get uh, their first participation in organized play, I would not be organizing this event. While there are a couple names here that are vying for the top of the leaderboard, I promise you over the summer, hundreds of folks have joined into name PC events and so many folks are enjoying this because it's just an excuse to go out to travel, to meet people, to go to a cool city and spend your weekend hanging out, making friends and playing some Netrunner. It's really important as a newer player. It's the biggest jump to get involved in organized play. It seems daunting. I was there many, many years ago, but I promise you it is one of the most friendly environments you could participate in. And folks are just so happy that you came out. This is a casual tier event. And while there definitely will be some good players here vying for leaderboard points, that does not mean that you should not be out here hanging out and enjoying this game as well. So please, if you're considering it, I highly recommend it. Getting involved in organized play is kind of the best thing. Let's talk about the venue. We're at a fantastic venue. I can't ask for a better venue. This is the Silver Goblin. 
This is the store that we were at last year for Canadian Nationals, and it's my favorite place to play cards in Montreal. Uh, notably, if you Google it, sometimes the name Gobelin d'Archant comes up. Uh, that's the French term. It's the exact same store. And this place is phenomenal. A uh, shout out to Adam and Chris, who are helping organize this event. We worked with them for Nationals last year, and they had such a phenomenal time uh, meeting and engaging with the Netrunner community, which is a space that they weren't too familiar with. It's bright. It's well lit. It's clean. It's accessible. It's my favorite place to play cards in Montreal. And so we're super stoked to be here once again because they were very, very, very kind to work with. And it's just a great atmosphere. Now, if you want to find the Silver Goblin, it's only slightly trickier to get there than it should be. And that's mostly because we're inside a different building. We have no like street level presence. This is the building you should be looking for. It's called the Belgo building. This used to be a sort of like factory a kind of warehouse thing 100 years ago when it was a bit more industrial. And this is the building we're in. It's technically an art gallery building, as you see the French name here, Galerie d'Art Contemporaine de Belgo. This is the door that you need to look for. The Silver Goblin is not on the ground floor, so you're not going to see much Silver Goblin, but you want to look for these glass doors with the green sign above it. This picture is a bit old, so I think the stores are slightly different. This one over here on the left is now a ramen store. I'm not sure what's on the right. Now, there should ideally be a bit of like a sandwich board sign on the sidewalk that says Silver Goblin go inside. But if it's not there in the morning early, uh, these are the doors you're looking for in the Belgo building. Once you go through these doors confidently, there will be stairs in front of you across the lobby. You just want to go up two floors to floor two. We're at 216. Once you get out of the stairwell on floor two, we're basically right in front of the stairs, slightly to the left. You can't miss the sign. Big uh, D12 in red with a G over it. You can't really miss it. Otherwise, accessibility in this building is fantastic. There's elevators. If you go to the lobby, turn left or right down the hallway where there's two elevators, one on each side. You can get up to floor two, no problem. In terms of restrooms, there's gendered restrooms, one floor below the goblin, one floor above. And there are private, all gender bathrooms. You just have to ask the staff for a key. You want to buy tickets? You can buy tickets. They're already up. Mind you, tickets are $40 Canadian. That gets you for the whole weekend. It's a two day event and you can get them online. The link will be in the description. Please, if you're going, get your tickets as soon as you can. Please grab your tickets ahead of time. You can get your tickets when you show up on the day uh, that you roll in on a Saturday morning. But we really appreciate it if you can get your tickets sooner than later. And it's mostly just so we have an idea of how many players are showing up because we have to make sure there's enough participation, prize support and that sort of idea. So if you can get your tickets as soon as possible, that actually really helps us organize the event. Again, link in the description. All right. So now you have your ticket. And of course, we have to get to the Silver Goblin. And luckily, we have some help for you. This is the NPC Montreal 2024 map. This is a Google map I've put together and it's pinned down below in the link. So please open this and enjoy this. Not only does this have where the Silver Goblin is and some parking and commuting options we'll be talking about in a second, but there's a whole bunch of categories here of things to eat and see, uh, some dining options, some sightseeing stuff. It just has a lot of stuff that should be helpful to have a good time here in Montreal. Montreal's a fantastic city. There's going to be a lot more stuff we're going to add to this slowly, but this is a huge kind of map that will hopefully push you in the right direction to enjoy your nice weekend here in Montreal. Now, starting here, this is the Silver Goblin. That's the Maroon Star. We're on St. Catharines West. It's a one way street here getting into the Place des Arts area. And if you want to park, you can drive up to the Silver Goblin and technically you're allowed to park just on the street. I wouldn't recommend that particularly, especially if you don't speak French, because most of the parking signs of where to legally park are entirely in French and they're kind of hard to understand. But if you can figure it out and you're comfortable, there is street side parking. You generally have to pay per hour at the machines, but you can do that. Now, if you want something much simpler, we have two good options. Firstly, in the Belgo building itself, there is an underground parking complex to access that. When you're going to be going down St. Catharines West, you want to turn right down to Rue de Bleury and then immediately veer right to Rue St. Edward, which is the alleyway behind the Belgo building. Once you turn right on the alleyway, it'll be very obvious there's an underground parking structure underneath the Belgo building. You can go under there. Last year, it was like $16, $18, I think, to park per day. And you can just park there the entire day. That's pretty convenient. They have stairs and elevators from there straight up to the second floor. You can go. You don't have to go outside. Now, last time we parked there, we went slightly further. We parked at the Parkade Montreal, which is also on this map. It's about a five minute walk away down on Almer Street. Uh, this is just like a private public parking building, uh, and it was reasonably rated. It was slightly cheaper than parking there. And you have a five minute walk if you can make it. Now, for what it's worth, I wouldn't highly recommend driving into the city downtown if you can avoid it. Uh, generally, if you want to keep your car wherever you're staying, if you're staying overnight and then just take a public transport in, take a walk, take a bike. We'll talk about a couple options. It can get a bit busy downtown, especially in the summer, because a lot of streets get closed down uh, due to summer festivities and stuff like that. So if you need to, you can and it won't be horrible. But there's better options if you want something a bit more comfortable. Notably, too, if you're driving in the city of Montreal, just watch out. As soon as you hit the island of Montreal, you're not allowed to turn right on a red light. They will warn you, but that is illegal. So don't just keep that in mind. You don't want to turn right on a red light. 
Otherwise, though, if you want to commute, we have a metro system, the STM. This is our public transport system, including a subway. We call it the metro here in Montreal, and it's really good. Uh, it's very clean. It's very fast. It comes pretty consistently, and I can't recommend it enough. Uh, if you want to buy a weekend pass, unlimited weekend is about $16 uh, Canadian. That's cheaper than one Uber ride, which, mind you, we do have Uber in Canada. You can do that. But if you want to get on the metro, uh, we are actually very, very close to a bunch of metro options. This is all attached to the map. So if you want to take the green line at Place des Arts, we're about a three minute walk from the Place des Arts metro station. That one's really great. And if you're on the orange line, we're about an eight minute walk from either Place d'Arm or Square Victoria. We're kind of slap in the middle. But if you get on the metro, it should be relatively easy to get to uh, the Silver Goblin. You just have to do a three minute walk. Now, lastly, if you're a bit more brave and want to enjoy the city, we have bike rentals. These are called Bixie bikes and they're all over. They're just like stations with bikes. You kind of you tap your credit card, take one out. You have about 45 minutes. It should cost around two dollars and you can go for a nice bike ride. Uh, they have these stations everywhere. Uh, Montreal has some really good bike infrastructure with like protected lanes. Like you don't have to bike amongst cars. Uh, just watch out. Bring a helmet, please. If you take one of the electric assisted bikes, you legally need a helmet. But on any bike in the city, you probably should have a helmet. Anyways, it's the best option. So please just take a helmet. But the Bixies are great. I Bixie everywhere. And that's mostly it. I think you should be able to get to the Silver Goblin again. Enjoy the map. And we should talk about the event itself. And we're going to be playing a standard Netrunner tournament. This is single sided Swiss and we're playing in the standard format. If you're not familiar, standard is largely the biggest Netrunner format. It's what the World Championship is played in, for example. And it encompasses the last seven years of the Netrunner cards, both Null Signal games and then the last couple of years of Fantasy Flight Games products. You can find more, mind you, linked here. This is the supported formats page, so you can see what the standard legal sets are, and of course, the standard ban list. I think notably, uh, this says standard ban list 2403. Technically, we're on 2405, which it displays correctly. I just don't think it's titled correctly. Uh, but yeah, we're playing standard right now, which is a great format, but a bit of a wider card pool. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that if you don't have some of the old Fantasy Flight Games cards, which are kind of hard to find, they've been out of print for a while, or you're missing some Null Signal Games cards, Proxying is not only allowed at all levels of Netrunner play, but it's actually encouraged. So if you're missing certain cards, check out ProxyNexus.com, linked in below. It's a website where you can input certain cards or whole deck lists and just get a printable sheet. Print it out, cut those cards out, put them in sleeves. Again, you need opaque sleeves for this tournament. You don't want to be able to see through the back of the sleeve. And just make sure if you're cutting out paper cards that you put something behind them, like an old Magic the Gathering card, just so that you can't tell which of your cards are paper and which ones are cardboard. But again. If you're missing anything, proxying is not only allowed, it is encouraged. You can play with black and white cards. You can play with color printed cards. Whatever you need, just go ahead and print them. Uh, we're just excited you're coming out to play. Again, proxying is sick. Also, if you're maybe newer to the standard format and you're not sure what a standard deck list looks like, I cannot encourage enough. NetrunnerDB.com is the website that people do their deck building and sharing their deck lists online. If you go to the deck list tab on NetrunnerDB, there'll be this filter in the top right corner. Just hit the standard button. And then you'll be greeted with a whole bunch of standard decks. You can go ahead and narrow down the search if there's a certain card you want to see or a certain identity you want to use. But all these decks largely should be standard legal decks that are fantastic choices to bring to this event. So again, if you're newer to the game, net decking is one of the easiest ways to get into this game and play something that already works relatively well. And uh, you'll have a nice backbone to build on. Uh, net decking is awesome. Cannot recommend it enough. Now, the standard event that we're running is going to be ran in single sided Swiss. Uh, this is the Swiss format in which each round is 40 minutes. And in each 40 minute round, the software is going to tell you who your opponent is and also tell you which side of the matchup you're going to be playing. So it might say, for example, in round one, you're playing against this opponent. You will be playing runner. They will be playing the corp. And that's all you do in 40 minutes. You just play one game. There'll be more rounds because the rounds are shorter because you're only playing one side of the two sided potential matchup. And that's largely how single sided Swiss works. So you should be meeting more people overall because there will be more rounds against more different people throughout the day. It should try and balance it out that you're playing the same amount as runner and corp throughout the day. So it's relatively even. But I'm a big fan of single sided Swiss and I'm excited. 40 minute rounds are going to be a lot of fun. Now, registration at the event starts at 10 o'clock. So that's when we're going to be open at the Silver Goblin. That's when we want you to show up, get your name down, get registered, pick up your participation prizes, and then we can set up all the tournament software. So at 1045, we'll be doing some small announcements to make sure we're on the same page talking about the day, and we should be playing the game by 11 o'clock. We're expecting to have about seven rounds of single sided Swiss. Mind you, it can change depending on turnout, but seven is probably what we're looking at. And the scheduling means we should be closing the day on Saturday, day one at around six, six thirty. Last time when we did Montreal Nationals, we played eight rounds of single sided Swiss on a single day. And we also started a lot later and we finished at like nine o'clock. That was way too late. And I promise you this year we're going to be starting earlier at 10, starting the games at 11 and we should be done a fair bit sooner. 
which means if you're organizing dinner plans on Saturday night, I would get reservations if you're going for reservations around 730. I wouldn't recommend doing sooner because I don't know what can happen, but 730 to give you some travel time and to make sure everyone's comfortable. That's probably a safe bet. Don't book a six o'clock dinner. You will be missing your six o'clock dinner. Notably, too, in Montreal, it's a pretty European city. So if you feel like going for dinner at nine o'clock, that should not be a problem here at all. But again, dinner, try and aim for 730. We should be done by 6, 630, and that will give you some grace period to go out and get where you need to be going. Now, otherwise, we should have a lunch break during the day. Uh, lunch break should be after between rounds three and four, if I'm not mistaken. I think the current schedule says that should be between 1.30 and 2.30. That means if you're used to taking lunch at noon, you might be a bit late on that, so have a big breakfast. But generally, between 1.30 and 2.30, that's when we should have a lunch break. You should have an hour. If you check out the map, there's a section here called Lunch Break Food Options, and it just highlights some food options that are close to the Silver Goblin, because again, you only have an hour, so please don't try and go deep downtown or up to the plateau to get some good bagels. You just don't have time to do it in an hour. So here are some options across a lot of vegetarian and vegan options, mind you, because of personal bias, but we're going to be adding more options here if there's anything locally that people have enjoyed over the last time in Montreal that they think should be here. Downstairs, there's a ramen spot that's great. There's a burritos place around the corner and W's across the street. That's a burger chain. It's a bit better in Canada than the U.S. And they have vegan and vegetarian options, but there's a whole bunch of options here. But please don't stray too far. We only have an hour to make sure we're done by that six o'clock that we want to be done by. And that's it again. We should be doing about seven rounds. We'll be done at six, just 40 minute rounds. We're going to be trucking along. And uh, then that means the top eight players at the end of day one will be invited on Sunday to come back for a top cut. Notably, for all players, Deck lists are not required. You do not need to present a deck list. This is a closed deck list tournament. Just show up with your cards and just play the game. Now, for the players who make the top eight, they will need to produce a deck list. So at the end of day one, once we figure out who our top eight is, we'll be working with them. We'll have the deck list sheets and we'll write down or we'll work with you to write down a deck list because deck lists will be open if you make the top cut. So in short, the eight players, the top eight players on day one will be returning on day two, and they'll be playing a double elimination cut to figure out who is going to be the name BC Montreal champion. They will have deck lists. We'll worry about that when we cross that bridge. Don't you don't need to bring your deck list. Now, day two, we're going to be starting about the same time. We're going to be there at 10. Uh, event will start slightly later, 1030, 1045 again, once everyone comes in in the morning. And there's going to be two major things happening on Sunday. Firstly, there'll be that double elimination top cut for the eight players vying to figure out who's the NAMBC BC Montreal champion. But for everybody else, we invite you back for some more organized Netrunner play. And we're playing a weird format. There'll be a new standalone tournament on Sunday that will be just, I think, Swiss rounds. I don't think we're going to be doing a top cut in a new format called Throwback. This is a cool format, and this is a format that folks have been playing across mostly named PC events over the last summer. And in short, to play the throwback format, it is just the standard format. So exact same rules of the standard format with the standard ban list and the same card pool. But each player in each of their decks for the runner deck and their corp deck can play one full playset or one identity that has rotated out of the game. As long as that card was not banned at the time it was rotated. So this list here will be linked against ones always be running as backup, but largely you can play any card as your like throwback splash besides these two dozen cards that you see named here. Now, this is a really fun format. There's a lot of ways to tackle this. If you're an old head who's been playing Downrunner for a long time and there's a favorite deck of your that you haven't been able to play for a long time now because of rotation, maybe you just want to play some noise and spam out some viruses. You can do that in this format, which is really fun. But also, if you're a newer player, I think it's a really easy format to get into because whatever decks that you brought on Saturday, you can just make one small change. You can just say, OK, I'm going to play my Zaya deck, but instead of card diversion of funds, I'm going to play account siphon. And it can actually be that simple to just modify the decks that you brought on Saturday and play them on Sunday with slightly more spice to it. Otherwise, I think creative deck builders can have a lot of fun here. But if you want some inspiration, mind you, if you go to the Netrun DB and search the throwback underneath the decklist name, You'll find a lot of people posting the throwback decks that they've been playing over the summer, and I have no doubt you'll find something here that's cool that could work out that is uh, relatively easy to put together. Now, of course, if you don't have the old Fantasy Flight Games cards, just like in the standard tournament, proxy away. So if you're missing account siphon, just go proxy them. If you don't have three copies of Desperado, proxy them. Or you can always try and ask someone uh, to borrow some cards from their old collection. Now, throwback we will have a throwback champion. We'll be playing a certain amount of Swiss rounds. Again, how many rounds depends on how many people are playing, but uh, that will be a side tournament going on at the exact same time, and we have great prize support for that as well. 
Also on Sunday, if you just want to come back and hang out, that's also cool too. If you don't want to play throwback and there should be other stuff going on, there might be some draft pods. There's usually some fun stuff. But last year at Canets, people showed up on Sunday and just hung out and played board games. We had like a six player game of New Angeles going on and there's a bit of a board game library at the Silver Goblin. Also feel free to bring your own stuff. If you want to play Twilight Imperium, we have all Sunday afternoon. You can do it. Uh, but just whatever you want to do, we have a lovely space for you to hang out while the top eight cut is going on. You can watch the top eight cut if you want. Uh, but Sunday is throwback and then whatever stuff you want to do in the space. We have a space. It'll be fun. Cool. And this is the fun part of the video. We get to talk about prize support because we have some really killer prize support. Now, firstly, this is a name PC event. So there is a participation prize everyone gets. This is a unique fermenter from Scott Aminga. This was commissioned by the folks in NPC. So everyone who shows up will be getting a full play set of these fermenter name PC Scott Aminga arts. They're phenomenal. So this is a participation prize for just showing up. Speaking of showing up as well, there's custom die. NPC has put together these acrylic dye. There's a teal and there's a purple. Uh, I believe we have enough of these that everyone can get both of them. I'm pretty sure. And they have an NPC on the one. They're quite nice. Who doesn't like some dice? We also have a whole bunch of NSG stuff. We have a full boosted 2024 H2 circuit opener kit. Uh, this is a quite a nice kit. We have, uh, I think, four or five play mats of the see how they run. We have the tree lines. We have the tranquility home grids. And we also have the Polongis, which are really cool and really hard to find. Those were from Worlds 2022, if I'm not mistaken. So we have a boosted kit, which means we also have two circuit breaker invites. We also have boosted 2024 Q2 game night kits. This is the one with the Kura Puras and the Your Digital Lifes, both great cards. So we'll have more stuff. And I think we have a bunch of older NSG prize support kits. We'll be cracking open and kind of working into the prize support across the two days. So we got a lot of good NSG stuff for you to pick up alongside that. We also have some very exciting prize support that is unique to NAN PC Montreal. Firstly, I need to give a huge shout out to my lovely partner, Maddie. She knits and she crochets. You'll see her at the event. She's a tournament organizer as well. And we were thinking, what's a cool prize that we could give to people as a participation? And this is Banhar. You might be familiar with Banhar, a very ubiquitous Anar card that allows you to send out your Falcon to mark a server and start face tanking some net damage subroutines. And Maddie, who uh, she crochets and she knits, we came up with this really cool idea. So as a participation prize, you're going to be able to stick your hand into a bag and pull out your own plushy Banhar Falcon. We have a whole bunch of these. This is actually one of the big reasons why we want you to grab your ticket as soon as you can. So we have an idea of how many people are showing up. We have a lot of different colors. So you just reach your hand into the bag and grab what you can and then trade amongst yourselves that there's a certain color that you think works best for you. But these are going to be participation prizes. Everyone at NAMPC Montreal is going to get their own plushy Falcon. I think these turned out so well. Now, for even more crochet plushy goodness, these were not participation prizes. These, I believe, will be raffled off in some way. If you need a Fazerum Entangler token to mark where you're putting your Fazerums so you don't go over MU in your uh, World Tree Arasana deck, uh, we also got some cute little slime molds that were crocheted in. Uh, these turned out phenomenal. Uh, there's not a lot of slime molds out of crochet, uh, so these are kind of unique. But we're going to have a couple of these that should be, I believe, raffled off. There's also some more stuff. I'm pretty sure legally at a casual level tournament, you can replace your Arasana identity with just some giant crochet frogs. So there's going to be a couple of these as well at the event. These will be raffled off, but we have a bunch of fun crochet plushy tokens that shout out to Maddie, who's been crocheting. Uh, she's been hard at work making this stuff happen, and they're turning out absolutely fantastic. Again, please grab your tickets so we know how many birds to make. I already have so many falcons on my desk, uh, but you'll be able to get one when you show up. Notably, too, to get some Montreal Spice, you might have seen last year. Uh, this is the Montreal logo. It's been around since the 80s. It's the Montreal Rosette. It's a combination of a V and an M for Ville de Montréal, the city of Montreal. And last year, we worked alongside Kat Chen, and we got this. We exploded the Rosette into the SMC Altart. Uh, I'm so happy with how this turned out, and we will be reprinting these. We'll have, again, participation prizes. You might have had one last year if you came down to Montreal, but we have SMCs for everyone. So the SMC on one side, full art on the other side, you can sleeve it up however you think is appropriate for your playgroup. We'll also have some foil versions, which will be harder to get. I think this will be a top cut thing, but we have some rare foils as well. Speaking of the Montreal Rosette as well, we're going a bit harder on it too. Shout out to Ken70, who we've commissioned to make some Montreal uh, power counter tokens. So we're going to have a couple play sets of these. Specifically, this is early prototype footage. I think they're already looking really nice, but they still have to be painted and, and sanded and touched up and all the magic that happens. But we're going to have play sets of the Montreal Rosette to get your power counter so you can play Pudma and not be upset about it. Now, Ken70 makes other acrylic tokens. You can find a link to Ken's store in the description below. Uh, there's some really great stuff up here. Now, if there's certain things you want to pick up, Ken70 will be at an NPC Montreal. So if you want to save on some shipping, you might be able to just pick up your order in person. And I believe there will be some stuff for sale at the event as well. But there's some really nice tokens here. Now, last two pieces of prize support. Uh, we want to make sure that if you win an NPC Montreal, it's going to be a bit of a feat that we have something to remember it for. We don't have a plaque. We have something a bit more functional. 
This is handmade out of walnut. Uh, the inlay is birch. It has a couple removable dividers, so you can put a bunch of decks in there, a couple tokens. Uh, this is the prize for winning the NPC Montreal Standard Event, and I'm so happy with how this thing turned out. A huge shout out to Marc LeBlanc, a woodworker, a friend of one of the organizers here in Montreal who put this together. Uh, and this can be yours if you win the NPC Montreal event. A link to Marc LeBlanc's YouTube channel uh, is below. He's a woodworker in the Laval area, and we're super stoked to be able to have a nice practical trophy for you to remember this event by. Now, finally, our last prize. This has now become a bit of a tradition uh, for our lowest standing international player. So if you've crossed the border into Canada and you did not have a great competitive Netrunner weekend, $25 Tim Hortons gift card just for you. You can make some friends and share it with other folks. The $25 of Tim Hortons is arguably too much Tim Hortons. But thanks so much for coming. I hope you had a great time. Uh, enjoy your Timbits. Uh, enjoy some Canada there. And that's mostly it. That's all the prize support we have. We have a ton of stuff, a lot of participation prize. We have some more stuff also going on behind the scenes. There might be some acrylic stuff that locally some folks are making to throw in the prize support. We're going to be digging up some old uh, NSG prize packs too, but we're trying to make this as stacked as possible. And we're going to have a lot of stuff on the raffle. So you don't have to be a killer Netrunner player to feel like you're getting some good stuff by coming out to NPC Montreal. And speaking of coming out to Montreal, I want to be very clear. Montreal in the summer is kind of the best. Uh, the city is absolutely incredible. Uh, it has a lot of outdoor life, whether you're going down to the old port or hanging out downtown, going to the plateau, going to the parks. There's so much to do in this beautiful city. And the end of August, it's kind of like the peak time. Uh, I cannot recommend it enough if you've never been to the city to try and make it down here. Now, as I said earlier, we have a map. Uh, this is going to be linked that has just about everything attached to it. There's a whole bunch of categories of sightseeing and food and stuff like that. I'll be honest again, I'm a vegetarian, so a lot of these food takes are kind of tailored around my stuff that I eat. So if you have been in Montreal, maybe you came last year or you've been here before and there's certain recommendations you think other people should experience, please hit me up and I can add this to this map because there's a lot of stuff going on here and I want to make sure you have so many cool options when you come to the city. Again, link to the map is below. Final point, the event will not be streamed. We will be filming the event though. And so just like Nationals last year, in the next couple months, next couple weeks after this, we'll be getting some edited gameplay up on the channel. So if you missed the event, if you want to see some of that top tier, exciting Netrunner content, uh, we'll have that up on screens sooner than later here on the Metropol Grid. And I think that's mostly it. Again, NPC Montreal, August 24th and 25th. We have some great prize support. It's going to be a fantastic tournament. Silver Goblin is, again, just such a phenomenal store, such a phenomenal atmosphere. We're super stoked to be working with them again. Tickets are available, $40. Please grab them sooner than later so we know how many of these Falcons to make. And I think that's mostly it. If there's any questions you have, please hit me up in the comments below. I can answer them as soon as possible. But otherwise, we look forward in just two weeks to be seeing you here for a nice long weekend of Netrunner in Montreal. And with that, take care. We'll see you in a bit. Yeah.